Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we'd like to welcome you back to the 2015 AccuStats Make It Happen 10 Ball Invitational Tournament. We're here at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey. This is the third day of the four-day round robin. We have six of the world's greatest players on hand. Uh, they're going to play a round robin through uh, tomorrow evening, at which time the top two records will come back and play in the finals. And uh, we'd like to get underway here with our uh, 2.30 time frame matchup. Our first gentleman is the uh, 2015 Ocean State Nine Ball Champion, three-time winner at the Turning Stone Casino. He has a 2-0 record uh, thus far in the tournament. Please welcome from Glasgow, Scotland, Mr. Jason Shaw. Jason Shaw, thank you. And his opponent is a former WPA World Straight Pool Champion, former World Nine Ball Champion, has a 2-1 record so far in the round robin from Fulda, Germany, known as the Hitman. Please welcome back Thorsten Holman. Thank you. Gentlemen, you may lag for the first break. We're going to send it to the booth, Billy Ann Cardona and Danny DiLiberto. Take it away, you guys. Akistat's Video Productions presents from Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey. The Make It Happen 10 Ball Invitational. Along with Danny DiLiberto, I'm Bill N. Cardona. This is day number three, and this match has significant importance, Danny. This is a big, big match because two, both of these players have a chance to get into the finals. Shaw with a record of 2 and 0. Oh. Obviously, he has a chance to get into the finals, but. Thorson Holman has an excellent chance of getting into the finals. He also has two wins, but he has a loss. But in his loss, he was able to accumulate 11 games. So therefore, uh, there's a tiebreaker system in place here that if there's a tie for second place, the player that accumulates the most number of games will then win his way into the final match. And with his one loss, Holman won 11 games. That's awfully big. Big match coming up for both of these players. If Shaw goes on to win this match, obviously he figures to get into the finals. He'll have three wins and no losses with two remaining matches to play. Three ball. Pocketing two balls on the break. Now, Holman, if he can stay competitive in this match and lose like 13 to 12 or 11 and win his last match, I believe he will get into the finals because of that. But if he wins this match, I think he's going to be pretty much into the finals. There's only three players left in the tournament. I think they can have a chance to go to the finals. The two players here and Shane Van Boning. Strickland is out, Appleton is out, and Chang, even though he has two wins, in his two losses, he didn't accumulate enough games, probably, to make it to the final match. So it's going to be a dogfight among the three players that I mentioned. Van Boning, Holman, and Shaw. Holman's been playing very, very well. He's, his TPA in two of his three matches it was over 900. And I'd say around 860 or 870 is really world-class speed. When you hit the 900s, you're playing above world-class speed. And Holman's been doing that with, with a, you know, consistency. Two of the last three matches, he's been above 900. He's breaking the balls really well, and he's playing very well. It's going to be very difficult to beat him. But you know, on the other hand, Shaw, his opponent, one nothing home. And Shaw, his opponent, is also playing very well. But he's only played two matches. In his two matches, he defeated Strickland and Appleton. And he shot a 925 in his first match against Strickland, followed up by an 875 against Appleton. Well, Shaw has been breaking the balls extremely well, but he hasn't been breaking them with velocity. He's, he's been breaking them with like a mediocre, medium speed, but he's been getting great results. He's playing shape on the one. So he's going to be real tough to beat if his break con continues to be as productive as it's been.
It looked like Shaw was in trouble in his last match against Appleton. Appleton had control of the match just about the entire match. Shaw woke up about three quarters of a way through the match and, and really put a barrage on Appleton and end up stealing the match. If he can continue that type of play in this match, this is going to be a really, really close match. He's not getting that second ball, Danny. No. There's, he he looks like he the three three eventually went into the pocket. He's got a very thin cut on the one that looks like it's laying on the angle that the speed is is good to drop nicely for the two. You know, he's got to hit two rails without hitting any object balls. I mean, the seven and the four could be in the pat. Might have to take a long shot on the two just to avoid what I said. That's what he's doing. See, he could have gambled on getting closer, but he would have ran into one of those balls, and that wouldn't have helped. He's going to have to draw straight back for shape on the four and the side now. He's ended up straight in on the two. Had he ended up with an angle, he, would, he could have played shape for the four in the corner. I don't think he has the angle to do that. So he's pretty much forced to, to draw straight back for position on the four for the side pocket. He's going to stay down on the shot. Pretty tough shot to execute the way it needs to be executed. Nicely done. Yeah, it is. Now, he can opt to go two different ways here. He can just roll it in or go three cushions around the seven. I look for him to just roll it in here. Yeah, that's best percentage. Okay, but going around the seven, he's got to play good speed of the cue ball. Which he did. Mm -mm, I don't know about that. A little short, but he's good enough. See, by rolling it in, he would have had a, shot, a, a little longer shot on the five, but he would have been in better line in terms of the angle. He's okay because of where the six is. He doesn't have to do much. Now, the nine ball is positioned close to that side pocket, but I don't believe it's available to pocket it in the side, so he's going to probably have to pocket it in the corner, one of the two corners, most likely the, the lower corner. Well, where the ten is, he could pocket it in the side because he won't have to go far, so he could roll it. I think that's what he'll do. He doesn't have to play in the corner unless it becomes that. I think he can get to the side. Let's see what he thinks. I think the eight ball is, is positioned perfectly for him to play position for the nine in the corner. Like I said, he doesn't have much of a pocket in the side. So, with that understanding, the corner is probably the pocket of choice here. Uh-oh, he's not going to be snookered. Perfect. And it was earlier in the tournament, earlier in the tournament, that he played a shot for like that for position to end up getting corner hooked by the side. He didn't want that to happen again. This is rack number two. Looks like Homer's going to take an early 2-0 lead in this match. Race to 13. Like I mentioned, the home has been playing extremely well. He defeated Appleton in in that in his match. That was actually the uh, the first match of the tournament, thirteen to eleven. Or maybe it was it was Shaw that he defeated. Shaw? No, no, it was it was Appleton, but it wasn't the first match. I think it was the second match. He defeated. Uh, Appleton 13 to 11. That was that real grinding match where the balls wouldn't cooperate. And after the balls were broken, no one really came up with a good shot. It was a real long match. I mean, it was, it, the match There's lasted Shaw. over two hours. Look at Shaw. Yeah, Holman's been breaking the balls well, but he's not getting that second ball now. And I... Uh, I noticed when Chang was breaking, he was getting the second ball in the early, early in the first match of the day. 
Now the second ball is the eight ball. And that's going to come close to going in that side pocket like that. That time he came a little closer, but still didn't get it. As a matter of fact, he's come up dry. Shaw will now make his first appearance at the table without a shot. Yeah, he's, he's got to go somewhere behind the eight and five here with the cue ball. That seems to be very convenient. Good decision there. Went behind the eight and he hit the one long. In case you don't snooker a guy, distance is the next best thing. Exactly. Two strong allies to have in your favor, leaving distance and obviously snookering your opponent, either putting him behind a ball or a wall of balls or something like that. And uh, the shot that Shaw shot actually uh, created that type of a, a, a result. Excellent hit. Pretty good hit. But he didn't get rewarded. He sold out. But it's a lot of work here. If he can roll it in, that's what he'll do. I don't know if he can do that. Now he's opting to go three cushions. The four is frozen to the seven. It looks like he looks like the four seven combination in the side. Yeah, is on. dead. It's definitely dead, Billy. And he plays at a quick pace. I was saying, he's got to be careful here with this 4-7 combination because he could possibly lose control of the lead ball, that being the 4 here. Don't hit it. I don't think he wanted to do that. He wanted to go around without hitting it at all. Just stop the ball right where the six is. Well, you know, he's opted to go back. I kind of like stopping it. Playing shape off the bottom rail than the side rail. Going cross table, he's got to have better speed of the cue ball, which obviously he has. Shown us that he has. And uh, this will be rack number three. He's looking to narrow the gap from two to nothing to two to one, which he has. It didn't take him long. Yes, he defeated Strickland in his first match, 13 to three. Shooting a, uh, shooting a 925, which was uh, a really a high TPA, one of the highest in the tournament up to this date. In his next match, he played Appleton and shot at 875. The best played match in the tournament was played last round with Chang when he played Appleman. Appleton, he shot a... Uh, he 850, shot a, I a, think a, he a, shot. A 940. Or nine, yeah. A nine forty, yeah. Nine forty. Van Boning shot a nine thirty seven and a nine twenty eight, so he's playing extremely well. But he lost to Holman in his last match. You see how uh, softly. There's the six. He's going to get the six. But notice how softly Shaw breaks the balls. In, in day number one, that break was very, very effective. This is day three. Things have changed. The table's got a little more wear. The cloth has a little more wear. 
Maybe the conditions are a little bit different in terms of humidity. So far, that break doesn't seem like it's working nearly as well as it did in day number one and two. So if it isn't, he's going to have to probably change it up a little bit. Yeah, he got him behind the seven. Nicely executed Good shot. shot. It's going to be a tough hit here. Anytime a ball is in the center of the table, where you can't hit, when you can hit multiple rails to get to it, to increase the hit or the accuracy, doing one rail at it is a more difficult hit. Especially if you have to go off of a side rail that you anticipate some slide. You know, especially if you got to hit the kick diagonally because high or low really affects the path when you're shooting diagonal. Hmm. He wants to... Uh, tough hit. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a tough hit. Um, it, this is tough. This is tough. Now, don't get me wrong. He's a favorite to make contact, but it's not the type of a kick that he uh, that he finds very appealing. But oh, I'll tell you what, that. he's real happy with the results of that kick. Yeah, he totally snuck at him. Easy hit, of course, but where will they all stop? He tried to get him behind a 10, but the four stopped that idea. Well, the one ball stopped just about in perfect line for him to pocket it and stop the cue ball for position on the two. Well, he'll go to the side rail and back out, I'd say, a couple of inches for position on the two. But most importantly here, you play the ball. Forget about position. That's natural. Yeah, he wants to uh, get as straight as he can on that three. And the five ball obviously precludes him from getting straight in. But he'll draw it back maybe six or so inches. Or stop right there with that angle. Mm -hmm. This is going to be uh, fairly difficult for him to control the cue ball because of the angle. For the four on the side. Let's see how well he does. See? It was hard for him to control it so he could make the four on the side. So he opted to play position for the four in the corner and still wasn't able to hold the cue ball. Now he has to come with a pretty tough shot. He's the only thing about the tough shot is he'll have position automatically if he makes it. It would have been really more difficult if you had to do something to fall on the five. But all he has to do is make it and he'll have position. I like the speed that he hit it with. I think he's going to get it. Nope. In day number one, that would have fallen. But like I said, this is day number three. The pockets are going to play a little tighter. The table rails are going to play a little quicker. Now Shaw has one turning stone... Three in a row, and that's a very tough tournament. A little bit of a stretch here. But it was definitely a fair trade-off, getting closer to the eight. He can afford to stretch a little bit. But he was so close to the ball. This is rank, uh, rack number four. Shaw's looking to tie it up at two games apiece. He does. The last time Shaw, Shaw broke the balls, he didn't get the action he was getting in day number one and two. 
So therefore, what is he going to do? Is he going to change the break? Is he going to hit him with more velocity? Or is he going to go back and hit him the same way? I'm kind of curious to find out what he does. If he, if he hits the, the break with the same speed that he hit it with the last time he broke the balls and he doesn't get any good results, the next time he breaks them, I look for him to change. But maybe he'll continue to break like he's been breaking because, it's, you know, he's been a, it's, it's, it's been proven to be pretty effective. And just one dry break is not going to change his mind. But maybe two dry breaks will. hit him the same way and he's come up dry again so the next time he breaks the balls he just may say uh, I'm not going for this I gotta change it up a little bit and that's what we gotta do that's how you play intelligent pool if something's not working even though it has worked before if it's not working now Get rid of it. Change it. I think Holman's going to try to put him behind the seven. Looks like a pretty good spot, but you got to play good to do it. You got to play good to do it. He played good. He sure did. Yeah, he doesn't like getting around. That would be the best way to go, the short way. This is a little bit tougher. Exactly. But he hit it. Nicely hit. He left him a window. He sure did, but I'll tell you what, he made a nice attempt there. He didn't get the results he wanted, but he got good results. Left distance with no real easy shot with tough position. So therefore, when you consider you know, the results and how he left the cue ball in relation to the, the, the two, I think he did a pretty good job. If you notice, Holman's not jumping on this shot. A lot to think about here. He may, have, he may even try to put him behind the seven here because the shot is tough in itself and position is tough as well. So a couple things, different things there. Maybe he'll go two cushions down table by the nine. Yeah, he overcut it on purpose. Right. There's no reason to go out for the shot there. And he got him. I think he got him totally. I don't think he can hit any part of the one. This is a tough kick. And if he can't hit the one directly, I don't see uh, where there's even a kick available. Yeah, there's no path to kick. If there isn't a kick available... And if he can't hit the one, and if he can't jump it, then he's going to have to look to tie up a ball. And if, and if that's a problem, I don't know what to tell him. I have no suggestions for him. It's rare for you to not have a suggestion. That's true. <laughs> Tough hit. I'd try to uh, shoot the nine on the four here. That's what I would do. Yeah, you're right. Tie a ball up. I would you... try to shoot the nine to the four because the likelihood of him kicking and hitting this one isn't very good at all. And even if he does, he's not going to get a lot of movement from the one. He's probably going to sell out. Billy's giving you great advice. If you have a tough kick or impossible kick, tie a ball up. Give him ball in hand and let him try to run out. See, now he's sold out with nothing tied up. He's got to be careful going from the one to the two. 
as you notice, there's not much room in that little gap there between the five and eight for him to play position for the two. Therefore, he must be careful here. This is going to take good speed of the cue ball. He's better off going to the rail and out. Like this. That way... Did very well. You know, he increases his margin for error. Going toward the two in that fashion. Now going from the three to the four is equally as difficult. He's got to be real careful here because if he goes to play the three in the side, the five ball now becomes a large ball. I'd follow it down and play the three in the corner. Okay, now, if he can draw straight across in between the five and the eight, he's created no. a good angle, but that's not going to be easy. No, I think he's got the wrong angle to do that. It's a tough shot coming up here. That's a good hit there. Oh, he got good. He got good. Wow. He's gotten over... The tough part of this rack, providing he makes the four. Now the eight ball is the only other little hurdle he has to get across here. All other balls lay pretty nice. The nine blocks the pocket for the eight. So therefore, he must play a good angle on the seven to play for another pocket. He doesn't have that pocket available. Nine blocks it. He's going to have to reach here, Dan. I don't really like what he's done with the cue ball here. Yeah, if he, he were left-handed, this would be an easy reach. Now he's got to draw back for the side, and he's stretching. This is not going to be easy. He's fallen short. Yeah, he did. He's going to have to go three rails now to the nine. It's workable, but uh, because he didn't get across table far enough to cut the seven to his right and ended up straight in, he's created this problem. It's workable, but not easy. But of course, there's no guarantees he's going to get things that are easy. He understands it, and being the player that he is, he should be able to handle situations like this. Oops. Mm, not this time. And he played himself out of line on the nine as well. Charles is going to step to the table with a very, very thin cut on the eight in the side. Which is very missable. But not this time. Excellent cue ball. It's rack number five. The game's tied up. Match is tied up at two games apiece now. Charles looking to go in front. Yes, it was the eight ball. That's the, the, the problem uh, in that last rack. The nine blocked the pocket. The nine blocked the pocket for the eight, so Holman had to go for another pocket, so he should have been a little more deliberate on playing position on the seven for to him to come up with a good angle to drop nicely for the eight. He couldn't do it, and I'm costing him the game. a couple of sponsors that uh, are our sponsors as well. Ivan Simonis, that's the uh, surface we play on, that's Simonis 860, and Lacoste Hybrid, Hybrid, excuse me, Hybrid.
okay, what's he going to do with the break here? Is he going to continue to break him soft, or is he going to change it? Is he going to put more velocity into it? I think he should. He, 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 he put a little bit more, but not enough. Might have made you three. But he picked up on the velocity, but I think he's going to bring it up another notch. I think that he will the next time he breaks him. Sometimes when you change change your break up, you don't you don't you're not really in tune to uh, hitting it with accuracy. You know, so, so you do it a notch at a time, and that's how you finally get to where you really like breaking them with a certain speed. Nice speed. Very good speed. The problem here is on the seven to the eight. The eight will go on the side where the four balls position in front of. And the six in relation to the seven will put you on the angle to draw down table for that shot. So he wants to go cross table and get relatively straight on the six. Come off that rail, maintaining that nice angle to draw the ball down. He wants to get further across the table. No, but that's okay. He needs to uh, stay on that angle now so he can draw the ball off the seven. Down for position for the eight in the side. Now he's lost that angle. He's lost that angle. I don't like where he's ended up here. Now he's looking to go for the corner. Yeah, I think he had a natural angle to come down for the side if he would have just stayed on that line. A lot of indecision out there. He's not really happy with the results here. I think he can go two rails to the eight in the far corner. He's now he's going down he's for going the eight to the, the side, side this way. He did it pretty well. Yeah, he's okay. A little further from the eight than he wanted, but uh, it'll suffice. He's a, you know, a great shot maker. Game number six. Looking to extend it to two games. A two game lead. Four, day, four games to two. Shaw. Now he picked up on his speed of the break a little bit the last time he broke the balls. He did pocket a ball, but I think he can afford to take it up another notch now. He's really an explosive player because uh, he's just an attacking player. He's very aggressive. And aggressive players have that ability to just to explode because they go after the pocket. Now, he didn't pick up at a notch. He made the eight in the side that time, which was a good ball to make. But he doesn't have a shot on the one. got a very difficult push. This is like uh, a debatable kick in the side now. You know, because the kick, as opposed to this safety here, may be better than this safety. You know, because if you make the kick, the two balls right there for position, and the kick wasn't that difficult. I believe you're right. You win more games kicking at that than pushing out. See, Ohom is passing it back to him because he doesn't see any remedy for this for this uh, push out if he accepts it. 
But let's see what Shaw has in mind. It's not bad. Not good either. No, it's not bad. I don't think he can see enough of the one ball to pocket it. Oh, I think he could. Well, Homer's looking at it, so it must not be. And there's really not much future in a hook here. And if he's not careful, he can scratch two in a corner here. He's going to come off the left side of the one. That's the only side of the one that he can see. The cue ball is going to swing two cushions toward this pocket. He's got to be careful he doesn't scratch. So he hit it short, making sure he didn't scratch. It's like you said, he's not going to snooker him. But next best thing is distance, and you're going to have to fade another safety. This is a very difficult safety coming up right here. Very difficult. He's a really an underdog here to walk away in good shape. He left it. He yeah. left the shot on the one. But if there's any salvation for Shaw, he left him a very tough angle here with the cue ball position close to that side rail. This is a very difficult shot to pocket the ball and come up with a shot on the two. He looks like he's going into the 10. He could make the 10. He was able to avoid contacting the 10. Good shot. Excellent shot. Now the 710 is lined up not into the pocket, but it's makeable, the combination. Of course, you don't want to play the combination if you don't have to. But it is makeable in case he ends up bad on the six. He may opt to do that later on in the rack. But I don't suspect that uh, he has that in mind. He's looking to run out here. In order to run out, oh, he's going to have to He's got get... that option if he wants it. It depends on where he falls on the six. Exactly. Now, he's got to take his time here and make sure he comes up with the right angle on the six. This is the big shot coming up in the rack. He, he got too straight. No, you're right. No, no he's he got, got too straight. Now he's going to look at the combination. That's what I was referring to before. It's makeable, but it's not the type of a shot you want to play position for. But now that he's found himself awkwardly positioned for the six, he just may have to. Unless he goes for the side. He's going for the he side. Did. He's going for the side with the seven. A little unorthodox way of getting out, but any way you get out is okay. Four to three after seven games. Holman trailing. Well, they're both shooting in the 900s, but we got a long way to go. I kind of like the way Holman is breaking the balls. Even though Shaw's been fairly productive off the break, I just, for some reason, aren't trusting his break. I'm not trusting his break. I like Holman's break. He's breaking it with more velocity. He has more of a chance to pocket a ball. And he's controlling the cue ball well. Came up dry. 
lot of congestion on the left side of the table around that side pocket. I don't even see how anyone's going to pocket the three with the four and ten in front of it. And there's not a gap in between the five ten like he's looking at now that I don't think that's even <laughs> uh, even a thought to even try to get there. I don't think the one has a full pocket. There it was. He didn't. This is going to be very, very interesting how home is going to attack that three, four, five position over there. You know, uh, he may have to play the two and I don't know. It's, it's, it's really risky. I'm not quite sure if the player that cut pockets the two is the underdog or the favorite. Yeah, you're right. So whoever pockets the two doesn't necessarily have to win this game because getting on the three and, and dealing with that, negotiating that, <laughs> is really difficult. I'd look to play some sort of a safety off the two. Maybe put him, put him on that 6-8. That's what I would do. I would put him on that 6-8 and try to get ball in hand. That's what he's going to do. Now, if you can get ball in hand, you might be able to do something. But considering the position of the two, even if he did get ball in hand, it still would be a problem. Yeah, but here, the kick might open up those balls. Yeah, he'd be better off kicking soft here. Good, let him have this, just like you said. Okay, now, I don't even know if it's right to pocket the two here. You know, he's going to take a look at it for a long time because he knows if he pockets the two, it may cost him the, the game. And then, you know, so pocketing the two is not something really I would want to do from here. Yeah, I always say in this situation, pocketing the two, he might become instant underdog. I try to put him behind the nine here. I think, I think he has the angle to do that. I try to put the cue ball behind the nine. I don't, th I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Well, it's <laughs> like I said, become instant underdog making that ball. You have to have a little cowardice in your game at some point, at some time. You know, you just need to have a little bit of that. Even though it sounds ugly, sometimes, you know. But it ended up, like, unbelievably perfect. perfect. If, if it's possible to get in there, he ended up there. I think he got in there, according to the monitor here. Because to try to get there, you would get there maybe one out of a hundred times to inadvertently get there like he did. It's yeah. unbelievable. He hit a lot of balls and still unbelievable. got there. Unbelievable. But I don't think he's in a good spot for the four. If it's frozen, he could push... Okay, that's that's what he's referring to. He uh, he uh, alerted to uh, Scott Smith that the ball was frozen. Now the rules today say that if the balls are frozen, you can push through the ball without it resulting in a foul. I don't like the rule, but that's the rule. Oh, he's not going to push. He's going to try to control Whitey. Oh. I think he got away with it. Well, not yet, Billy. He's still got the dice. Well, what I'm saying, uh, yeah. and, uh, uh, he isn't, hasn't suffered an immediate consequence right. with the miss or, or whatever. That's a good hit. That was excellent. the side of the ball excellent. to hit. That's an excellent shot. Lotus, he created distance. He didn't leave a shot. He froze the cue ball on the cushion. He did a, a lot of good things on that shot.
That's as good as anything right there. That's as good as anything he could have done. Yeah, the only thing he left is a cross side bank. And the cue ball will be flying everywhere. He had, you know, he used extra, really good judgment in opting to shoot that shot in the fashion that he did. Such good judgment. I consider him the favorite to win this game. Wow. I like How do these guys do that? How do these guys keep doing these things? I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean. Sean knows he got away with something and he was grinning. <laughs> Tough hit here. Oh, I don't think he's going to get the best of this. But now I do. How do these guys keep doing this? Come on. Great Are you shot. kidding me? I don't remember the, uh, me ever doing something like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How do these guys keep doing this? <laughs> What's happening here? Huh? Four ball, cross corner. I don't know, does he have a shot? They think Miss is a girl. <laughs> this is some pretty good stuff here, what do you think? He's got the nine. Wow. Nine is straight in. I'm talking about a sequence of great shots. And we got it all on DVD. <laughs> oh my. This is pretty good. Well, I think Shaw went for the extension. If he were amphibious, he wouldn't need that. Well, he's shooting with the extension on yet, but so what? Earl Strickland and Van Boning both have an extension on all the time. Not really, they just got long cues. Now that was a rack of pool right there, huh? That's a, that was a great rack. That was the best rack so far in the tournament. That was a good rack there. Like I said, we got it all on DVDs. But we've had some pretty good racks in this tournament up so far. I mean, well, we got the greatest players in the world. We're liable to get some good racks. <laughs> yeah, this is what we've come for. Huh? This is what we travel uh, across town, cross city, cross state, whatever, cross country. This is what we've come for. We've come to watch the best players in the world do miraculous things, and we're getting that, too. That was a great wreck. Oh, got the five ball, but I still don't trust that break. You no, know, it sure looks shaky. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm not trusting that soft break. He's grinning because he knows he got away with something. But he's been winning and he's having success, so he's not going to change anything.
Yeah, he's fallen about eight inches short of the mark. Yeah, he didn't get ideal here. He's going toward the nine here. Great shot. You know, and now he's got an awkward angle on the three to drop for, nicely for the four. Yeah, he can draw back to where probably he may be, where the cue ball may be now, maybe to the left of that by the six. Cue ball figures to go toward more toward the six here. Well, he's not afraid to shoot any shot, so look oh. at that. <laughs> he overdrew it more than you said. Yeah, well, yeah, and he spun it pretty good, and he put it, put a pretty good stroke on it, too. So he actually created the angle to get to the position he ended up yeah. in, and he did a pretty damn good job doing it. And this is the best he could have done from the five to the six. Because he couldn't cue the ball low. Doesn't matter. Well, it did there. See? As soon as you said that. I got See him. That? Yeah, he right. did it again, okay? I did it, yeah. <laughs> I gave you a chance to insult me. He's trying to see where the best position will be to go from the 9 to the 10, but he's got a multiple spots to get in. Yeah, well, the, but the nine's too far off the rail like to try to go three cushions around. If, if it was closer to the rail, you would draw back and do that. See, now, now three cushions around is okay, but if the nine was a little closer to the rail, the three cushion around shot would play a lot more, e a lot more he's easy. He's going three cushion. Yeah. That's too soft. I mean, it's okay, but not where he wanted to go. See, if the nine was closer to the rail, it would have been a thinner cut, which would have then allowed him to uh, pick up or put more speed on the cue ball. However, I'd rather be shooting than have my opponent shoot. Oh, I got him too. <laughs> I got both of them. Well, you're not playing favorites here. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think he'd miss that. Either, either did he. You know, I don't understand why he went underneath with uh, the cue ball to shoot that shot. Why wouldn't he just level off and go with the center ball? Don't you think he had more accuracy doing that? He felt better, I guess. But it didn't reward him. Sometimes feeling better isn't the right shot. You know, and for you people out there that, that, that looked at the way he hit that ball with a low ball, I don't know. I mean, uh, if I shoot a shot like that where I have to cut it in, I'm not going with a low ball with English. I'm going with a center ball. I think you, you have a lot more accuracy going with a center ball. You know, even if you put some 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 English on the, on it, uh, I just think that a center a center ball actually. That's how the snooker players feel, Billy. But anyway, that's the way I play up here in the booth, down there on the table. I don't play anywhere near like that. <laughs> It's a big match for both players, but if Shaw wins it, he's almost a cinch to be in the finals. No, not necessarily because... I know, I said almost. You're true. That's true, because if he, he has two remaining matches left and he wins either one of those matches, he'll get to the finals. Yeah. But if he loses Might both of them... Might win the today. tournament outright. But he's got tough matches yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, he does have tough matches because his next match is very tough. And it's going to be played a little later on in this evening with Shane Van Boning. So don't, don't miss that match. There's going to be an explosion in that match. And I'm not talking about the way Shaw breaks. I'm just talking about how he plays. Because he's very, a very explosive player. He attacks the balls. Very aggressive player. Tremendous shot maker. Great decision maker also. Okay, here we go. This is the shot coming up. Well, he looked to see if the eight goes in that other corner, and I guess it does. He's going to play for the side. No, he's going to play for the corner. That's gonna, what he looked at. He's going to play in between. 50-yard line. If he shoots it in the side, he's going to hit the 10. Maybe. I think he's going to hit the 10 if he does this. You think right. You're a good thinker. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. Didn't hurt him none. He's going to take a poor game lead against a very hot player. And in doing so, his TPA is going to raise on up there to around the 918 mark. Shaw wins game number 10. Now leads the match seven games to three. I keep referring to the TPA. I just do that just to keep you people advised on how well he's playing. Like I mentioned before, in his match against Strickland, his TPA was 925, which is quite a bit above world-class speed. And all these graphics to make you all smarter, Pat Fleming's baby. And it's really a mystery to me, and I'm kind of surprised. Why hasn't he been on the Moscone Cup? I, I really don't know. You mean in the European part? I don't know. American, European part? I don't he's know. He's not what... American. Well, I don't know. I mean... Uh... He's not American. He's from Scotland. That's part of the British Isles and part of Europe. So uh, he could be on the European team. There's that break. That's, that's, uh, he didn't make anything that time. You know, and the other, other times he broke the balls... Uh, it didn't look like he was going to make anything, but he did. And all the balls are open. Well, anyways, Holman's got to start his attack now and start his barrage because he trails by four games, even though it's fairly early, but not really. Seven to three. He can't afford to fall any Where further you going? behind. He's, wow. No, he doesn't have a shot. Yeah, I thought he was going to go right behind the three. He doesn't Either have a way, shot. Either way, he doesn't have a shot. All he can do is bank it lightly and go long. Oh, I got to try to put him by the five. Yeah. He I said bank it lightly. He, he, he lost, didn't bank he it control. lightly. He might have got away with it. Yeah, it's close. He may be able to hit the three, but... I don't know if he can pocket the three. Well, he's looking like he can do something. I think he's playing safe here. Yes, he is. But, it was but he's not playing a good one. It was difficult to play safe from, uh, from that position. He hit the ball a little bit too full. Holman's quite fortunate to get back to the table, this rack. And he better take advantage of it. 7-4 behind. Holman tricked him with a bad shot. 7-3 behind, I sh should have said. Now the 9 blocks the pocket for the 8. Now he ran into a similar problem earlier in the match, and then it didn't work out well for him. Um, and I'm talking... Uh, you know, I'm three or four balls ahead here, but that's going to be 
You know? Well, if he can get to there in the end on the eight, he's got a pocket. And he can get there because he can get the right angle on the seven right now to do that. So both angles will suffice on the seven, but he's going to need an angle. He likes the other angle. He, he wanted the other angle to go to the short rail, long rail, and then toward the eight. Well, he That's got pretty end. good here, Billy. Yeah, well, he, either angle would suffice, but now he's going to deal with the side pocket. That's why this angle isn't as good as the other angle. Playing short across table, you deal with the side pocket. Playing off the short rail, you take the side pocket out of the equation, and you don't have to be concerned with it. So he wants to stay away from the side, and staying away from the side, he's got to have better control of the speed of the cue ball. And it didn't hurt him that time. But keep that in mind, and he knows it. Keep that in mind. In that situation, you're better off going to the short rail, long rail, and then toward the eight in that fashion. Anyways, this is game number 11. Home is looking to narrow the gap to within three games, seven games to four. Okay, we're back. Holman trails in a match. Seven games for Shaw, four for Holman. Holman at the table, preparing to open up the balls in game number 12. Nice. Nice. Wow, he, he that was a pretty nice little kiss. Well, that, he's got a tricky shot here. He's got a thin hit on the one. So therefore, position will be tough. I agree. Pocketing the one is actually probably more predictable than coming up with a shot on the two. You're right. He doesn't even have to shoot it. He could shoot straight on stick, and he figures to snooker him. But he wants to shoot. He wants to sleep in the street, too. Yeah, that was also difficult. He had a great save by just shooting straight on. But you can't uh, you can't argue with him for shooting, Danny. Had I he know, made he's that, a shooter. Had he made that, he would have uh, been in pretty good shape. You know. Now this got tricky. How yeah. do you get on? Well, they got the combination. I think you got to draw it back. In. You got to draw it to the side rail if you can. You and think so? Yeah, draw draw it to the side rail in front of the side if you can do that. He's got a great combination if he falls on it. Oh, he's playing it for the side. He got there. That's a very good shot. But I'm getting tired of saying very great shot with this guy. Boy, he's really a good shot maker, man. He shoots off that rail so good. Well, you know what it is? He doesn't know they're tough. Either that or he doesn't care. I think it could be both. Did you notice that there isn't any chalk on the table? Eight to four, by the way, Shaw. Did you notice that there isn't any chalk on the table? Look. Now, Shaw keeps his chalk in his pocket. I really haven't noticed if Holman does, but there's no chalk on the table.
Did you ever c keep your chalk in your pocket? No? No, but I want to tell you something about that kind of thing. Yeah. Snooker players have a, a little thing that connects to their, you know, to belt. their belt. Uh-huh. But that's good reason because you can't lay it on the table with six by twelves. You got to do too much walking. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's the reason yeah, unless they you got have that. Multiple chalker on the yeah. table. Right. Yeah. But I understand that totally. So. You know what? He's been making the second ball and playing position in the side for the one enough, but not regularly, but enough. You know, to, to keep be that winning break, eight to, to four. Break. Well, if he can make this, it looks like he could. He can hit it full enough to get to the two. Well, he's going to have to work for the six and seven if he gets there. You know, they're such great players that we talk about like they're going to get there, but he didn't. That's a rare miss there. That was not missable. If he can cut this in, he may go into the seven now. Yeah, but he could get snookered with the ten. But he's still, it's a good idea, but I would rather try to run the balls and fall on the six in the side. No gamble that way. He did what you said. Yeah, he hit the rail before the ball. He did. I didn't think he was going to make it. Yeah, hitting the rail before the ball, even though he had all that inside on it, sends the cue ball toward the seven, which, which it did. Had he hit the ball first, he wouldn't have contacted the seven. You got to make the ball here. Forget about the cue ball. You got to make the ball. Forget it. There's no, Boy, no, no he reason almost to miss that one. Yeah, he tried to steer the cue ball. Well, you got to make the ball because you figure to come up with a shot on the four, even if he hit a ball. No more problems this rack. He's got to draw away from that. Uh, yeah, he got a little out of lane, yeah, so he's got, so he's got work it. to do. Going to draw back off the side rail now. Mm -hmm. Now you got to come across table twice. And now you're going to be okay. This is a good out, because he got in a little trouble a couple times. Eight to five, Shaw. Mr. Holman wins game number 13. After 13 games, the score is Mr. Shaw eight, Mr. Holman five. Oh boy, that's a no no. You know, he just got a break with Shaw missing an easy shot. Yeah, he, he really missed uh, the he, one ball badly. Yeah, he badly. did. He did. That caused the cue ball, the glance, to go right in the pocket. Yeah, he That's did. a bad shot. Very bad. Very bad. 
and he understands the importance of the break, but yet he didn't really concentrate on that, on that break at all. No, you know, he's more accurate than that. You know, and I'll tell you, the, uh, the Asian players, and in particular this, uh, the Chen from, uh, from the Chinese Taipei, he really, really concentrates on breaking the balls well. He makes sure that he hits that one ball accurately, you know? And, it's an uh, accurate shot, the break shot. People take it for granted. You just hit them hard. It doesn't matter where you hit them. It's an accuracy shot. Yeah, but that's so amateurish when you do that. You know, when you take the break for granted, knowing how important sh of an important shot it is. You know, and to get the opportunities, that, uh, you know, from especially from players like this guy, they don't come off. Hey, what's this? Does he have it? No. Oh, boy. He's curving it. Maybe no, he, he does. He oh, my did. Oh, he trickled it in. Boy, that was almost, almost disastrous. He looked up here and laughed. Five. It's nine to five, and that's the kind of work I don't like. Shaw wins game number 14. Now leads the match nine games to five. <clears throat> Let's see that when he almost snookered himself totally and he hit as much as he could of the eight and it almost didn't go. Let's see that one again. Look at this. Went in off the point. He massaged it a little. Wow. He banked it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised it went, even watching it for the second time. I know. It went again, Billy. I, you know, I didn't think it was going to go that time, but, I, but uh, I was wrong. That's the nine in the side and the there eight in the side. Wow. I'm starting to like his break now. <laughs> after, after not been liking, working. you know, not, after not trusting that break, I'm starting to like it now. Well, he missed another ball. Well, the only thing can save Shaw this rack is that combination. It looks like an easy combination, but you still got to tr control the cue ball, the four ball. You know, I don't mean something's going to happen, but that's the only hope that Shaw has in this rack. You want to get down table far enough here. Yeah, he got good on it. I, I even like going down table further. Well, something bad can happen. They, see, by, oh, by not boy. going down table further, you have to hit it too hard. And then if you hit it too hard, you may make the second ball, like the four ball, along with the five. Well, he's all right now for sure. Especially if you have to draw the cue ball. When you draw the cue ball, you put overspin on the front it makes, ball. Makes the ball you hit have follow on it. Right. 
and that's why I like going table further where you can roll it and then the, then the four ball sort of like slows up because it doesn't have the follow on Boy, it. he ran this track without hitting any rails. There he did. That's his, that's his chalk that he has on the table now. I guess he puts it in his pocket. Holman has only won two consecutive games once in this match, and that was in game number one and game number two. No other time in this match has he won more than one game at a time. Now, Shaw has won four games once and three games once, so therefore he was able to sustain his wins because of his break. The last time Holman broke the balls, he scratched right in the side. He's got to put more... Yeah, you got to concentrate on the accuracy. On the break. Oh. Oh, he made the 10, so he wins. He's not, you know, he's not making balls on the break. You know what Thorsten Holman's nickname is, Billy? The Hitman. Toasty. <laughs> it's the hit really? Man. That's what they call him, all his friends, Toasty. Well, yeah, I, I've heard of that, but I think that he's referred to as the Hitman. How many nicknames did Larry, uh, who, who had a lot of nicknames? Uh, Nick Varner, Nick the Stick, Cool Hand Luke. Uh, and Tommy Hearns. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to see that 10 on the break again after this. Oh, he made some balls. Here it is, 10 on the break. Got kissed in the side. It's not going to make it this time. Mm, oh, you're, it, it did. I thought it you went were in. right. Went in. Does he have a shot on the one? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It, uh, He's, he doesn't know either. <laughs> Looks like he's going to curve it a little. Yeah, but it's so hard to judge uh, Plus, you know, uh, he, over top of the four, you know? If he does, he's going to have a tough shot on the two anyway. You know what I would do? If I didn't like the shot, and I thought I was a slight dog, I would just touch the cue ball like a push. You know? Let the other guy shoot yeah, it. Yeah, and then if he passes, I'd shoot it. Give my opponent a chance to shoot a bad shot. Oh, he's not going to like it if he makes it. He played safe. Yeah, he played not safe. Not a good one. <laughs> He over, well, overspun it. I don't know. I agree with you. I mean, I would touch it and let the other guy figure it out. Boy, he's playing a little reckless there. Well, you know, it wasn't exactly like he had an easy shape uh, shot. But the thing about easy. him is... He doesn't take last inning into the next inning with him. You know, he's got a great temperament, this guy. <laughs> he's got a, good, a great shot, too. Yeah, that helps. I'm thinking he thinks he can make anything. And I'm thinking he can. And then 
his uh, his tempo at the table. You know, that's pretty, great it's, too. Yeah, it's pretty good to have that tempo, just like Jimmy Reed's tape. No time for negativity. No, you play so quick that you don't have time to think of bad things or overthink shots. It's just like you're practicing. For those of us who practice at home or in the pool room, we play at a real good tempo because, you know, we play the game the way we feel it. When we Sometimes when we're in our action, let me get back to the match real quick and I'll get back to that. It didn't take them long to make that rack. At the end of 17 games, it's home in seven and Shaw 10. Getting back to, to my point, whenever we practice at home, we play with the tempo like you know, we feel the game good because there's no pressures. So we play at our pace, at our tempo. If we could bring that to tournament play, or if we could bring that tempo to matches, whether they be money matches or tournament matches, and play with the same tempo, we would do the we would do well. It's when we start slowing down and start overthinking situations and think about bad things, that's how we start dogging it and get away from our game. His tempo, he plays so quick, he doesn't have time to overthink things. So therefore, <laughs> yeah. that's true. I know it's it. It's true. Okay? That's what I used to say about Lou Buter. He plays so fast that he doesn't have time to dog it. Yeah. So therefore, he his his natural tempo... It's all positive. It's all it's all good. So if we could Look, do that, the nine in the side, he didn't hit it hard. Oh, I think he might have a shot on the one too. See, like I play, I play a fellow pool. You play what? I play this fellow pool. Okay, I play him one pocket, and. He's a pretty good player, but sometimes he just overthinks things and he doesn't play well. And he says, oh, I'm really playing poorly. I'm out of stroke. But he plays all the time. So I said to him, listen, and I gave him a lesson on tempo. And they, now his game is, is picked up quite a bit. And, you know, and I think it's a, it, it's a good, good understanding and it's something that you should. Uh... Wow. Was it going? Oh, it trickled in. He's got a shot. He's got to go short now, two rails to the side rail, but short. He'll be perfect like that. You know, a few years ago, I wasn't impressed with Shaw. Now I think he can play. <laughs> Pat Fleming was the first one who really thought he was a great player. I got impressed with him when what he did to Johnny Morrow in Akron on tight pockets. Unbelievable what he did. He feels see he he feels the shot as he's walking around the table. He's so he's so uh, familiar with. Uh, with doing it that way, he's feeling the shot, you know, as he walks around the table. So therefore, it doesn't take him long to process it. When he gets on, when he gets to the ball, he goes on top of, gets on top of the shot, and everything's there. Shaw wins game number 18. After 18 games, he scores Mr. Shaw 11, Mr. Holman 7. Race to 13. Yeah, he's very entertaining to watch. He's, there's nothing boring about him. Now, he's going to make some discretion calls, I mean, discretion mistakes, you know what I mean? Because of his tempo, because he plays so quickly. But it's more than a fair trade-off because he's so efficient at the table playing with this tempo. I agree with you, Betty. Your name's Billy? I just called you Biddy. <laughs> well, why would he switch? She's having such success with the soft break. 
Look at that. Oh, he, he broke him soft again. Well, he didn't switch. He just didn't make the second ball on the side. But he doesn't have a shot on the two this time. Now, this is fairly damaging for Holman because he only has seven games, and this is going to give him his second loss. So, therefore, this is going to be a very damaging match for Holman unless he's able to win another two or three games. Well, he didn't lose this one yet. Well, that's well, what I'm saying is if he goes on to lose this match, he needs, you know, some he more needs games. to get about 10, 10 games on his side. He's got seven now. Because he trails by four games, 11 to 7. He really doesn't figure to win the match. But if he can get himself nine or 10 games, it'll be in the hunt. Right now, you have to say that Van Boning and Shaw is going to be in the finals. Unless Holman can get himself, to, uh, he can get himself 10 games here. Or 11. And on the other hand, Shaw wants to keep him down because I don't know if he understands the importance of keeping him down. But he wants to keep his game count as low as possible. Wow. Wow, wow. is right. He's getting rewarded yeah, for why that not? shot. Why not? He earned it. Boy, that was a great shot. It can get him on the hill. Center table, you know, uh, you don't follow this. You go underneath here. He's going to go follow it. Yeah, that's the way I would shoot it. That's a uh, keeps you in line. Well, he didn't get the right angle here. I think any angle's okay here. Does the seven go in the other corner? No, no he, it goes in the side. He's going to shoot in the same pocket. Why wouldn't he? He doesn't have the angle to do that. He's shooting it in the side now. Now he can go two rails to the eight. I might not even need to go two rails. Oh, he didn't need to. Look at that. He had the right angle. Yeah. He's playing the best pool, him and Van Boning. And I thought going into this match, Holman was right up there. But he, his, his, his speed dropped a notch. But well, he still this played, guy outbroke But he him. still played. Yeah, absolutely. That's what That's what really happened. You know? His break is so effective, it's keeping him in good stroke, and which is helping him keep his confidence level high because he's at the table and he's playing with that tempo. You know? You, know, you got to slow this guy down. You got to play under, under ad, adverse conditions playing this guy to slow his game down. That's how you beat this guy. Put him on two inch, two inch pockets. That'll really slow him down. I'm telling you, you should have seen him play in Akron <laughs> on real tight pockets. He made it look like a bar table. You know, Johnny Morrow is a pretty good player. He's a great player. He. Absolutely demolished him. Nine ball and ten ball. Eight this side. No? Four, four and then three. Uh oh. It's over. He's going to. Uh, yeah, it's getting on the to two, look over. Getting on the two is a problem, but uh, based off of what he's done up to this point, he's going to get on the two. He'll figure it out. Well, how about if he goes forward and he just takes the cut? Yeah, he'll figure like it that. out. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Yeah. It's over. He's going to win... Looks like 13 to 7, which is going to be very damaging for Holman, only getting seven games. But in the event it comes down to a tiebreaker yeah, for second this place. This game is over. Mm. This match is over.
He's impressed me, I'll tell you that. Oh, well, how could he not? He's impressed everybody here. He's shooting a 9.30. 9.30 on the TPA. He's pocketing balls on the break. And he's making just about any shot he's, he's asked to make. And he seems to know what to do. That's where he really improved. Well, he's going to play Van Boning tonight. It's the last match. I'm not going to miss that match, I tell you that. Of course I'm not, but I wouldn't miss it anyways. If I wasn't doing commentary, I would definitely be here to see that match. That's nice. See that draw right there? You draw, you draw like three and a half, four feet. That's not easy. Perfect line. 13-7. Oh, what an explosion. Now, he's one of the most explosive players in the world today, Jason Shaw. Okay, it's time for us to take a break. We'll be back after uh, around 7 o'clock or, or shortly after with Earl Strickland and Darren Appleton. Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with the revolutionary X-Shocks dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters. 